or is it just someone else's free will? Mm -hmm. And how do we learn not to procrastinate when faced with a situation, karma or not? Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. beautiful, yes. The basis of the question is, what is the difference between free will and karma? Good. Firstly, karma has been produced because of free will. Divine will does not produce any karma, for divine will is non-binding, but free will can be binding. Now, there can be good karma and bad karma. They both are binding. Hmm? Because all karma has nothing to do with the spiritual self of man. Karma has only to do with the mental self of man. Hmm? So when, as you said, if a person murders, is it his karma to murder? Hmm? Is it his karma to kill? Now, it depends who is killing. Hmm? Now, if a lion kills a man, hmm, then it is not karma of the lion, because that is his duty, his natural way. He is forced by the processes of nature to kill, to eat. No lion ever kills anyone uh, for the fun of it. It would kill a deer or anything for self-sustenance, for food. Hmm? Now, man does not do that. Why does man commit a murder? Hmm? For by committing that very act, he is adding to his karma. But what were the conditions before he did that? So the murder is not because of past karma, but because of past mental conditioning. Hmm. Now, how was that mental conditioning brought about? Because of his past karma. So who laid the egg, the chick, who comes first, the chicken or the hen? You see. So everything is karma, and everything is not karma. Now when you talk of free will, what do we mean by free will? Free will means that you have thought power. And because of that thought power, you have the freedom to do what you like. That is free will. Hmm? You decide on something good or bad, and you do it. You do it because of free will. Hmm? Now, karma does condition free will. For it is because of your past experiences in life and in previous lives that you can think in a certain manner. Hmm? Now, if your experiences in life and conditionings were such that it would make you think today of doing good work, of helping people, constructive work, then you'd be doing constructive work spontaneously. But if your condition is such that you'll do destructive things, hmm, then that too is done spontaneously. Hmm? Many a murderer, at least all of them, hmm, do not do that because they want to do it. Hmm? There is a compulsion in them, a need for some personal gain, perhaps, or to satisfy a mental aberration that this act is performed. Hmm? There is this imbalance in the subconscious mind that comes to the fore in the conscious mind 
that makes him perform this action, although the conscious mind will argue the pros and cons, the conscious mind will stop him from committing a certain act, but the conditionings of the subconscious will override the conscious thinking, and he will do that. How much is he to blame for that? Hmm? He is to blame, not because of his conscious self, because the conscious self is in conflict, but he is to be blamed for his subconscious self that contains the seed and the force for him to override the conscious pros and cons and make him perform the act. Hmm? So, the subconscious levels that are there contains all these thought patterns and experiences. He might have had some experience where he was hurt or even killed. And then the subconscious that lingers on after the body has been discarded, is discarded, wanted revenge. And that very sense that is born within this pattern is what we know as compulsion. Now how is he to curb that instinct? How is he to stop from committing that act? Because if he does not commit that act, he can go insane. And most of these killers are in reality psychopaths. Hmm? How is he to curb that? If he curbs it consciously, hmm, then he will suffer repressions within himself which will drive him insane. Hmm? So, this is where the conscious mind, although forced by this inner compulsion, can do something can do something when the conscious mind argues the pros and cons of some willful act which we call free will which we call free will this willful act that person needs help to help not to alter his subconscious mind but to strengthen the good thought in his conscious mind so that that person himself can get that good thought deeper down and alter the subconscious pattern. Then he will not kill. You see? So, the many people that have these tendencies, I believe, should not be jailed, but should be treated. Yeah. Now, what is, he, what is the free will's relation to karma? Hmm? Can you alter your karma with free will? Hmm? No. You can't alter your karma. For what you have sown, you will have to reap. But you can put the same momentum in a different direction. That same force that is there within the subconscious can be diverted into a different channel very consciously. And for this again, great understanding is required. That means that we are not changing our karma, but we are changing the force of our karma. We are changing the direction, rather, of our karma. For what has been wound up, and karma is only a winding up, that has to be unwound. How it is to be done? That is the question. How do we unwind the karmic debts so that 
we do not suffer the consequences so much. Hmm? I've said in some talk somewhere that if you kill ten people, it would not mean that you will have to be killed ten times. Hmm? Use the free will, the conscious analytical powers you have, and save eleven lives. Hmm? Then the debt of killing the ten people will be rubbed off. Hmm? A balance is performed. There are no particular karmas that will have its effect no cause will have its effect in a similar way. Your free will has the ability to change the effect in a different way. And yet the momentum, the force of karma will not be lost. It will be there. But by free will, by gaining the understandings we have spoken about, we alter the course of that karma which could be progressive for us. Evolutionary-wise, it could be progressive. So difficulties, too, hmm, has certain karmic values. And that is why man has been given the thinking mind. Hmm? We are talking of the average man. We are not talking of the aberrated mind that cannot think right. Hmm? We're talking of the average person. Hmm? So, by the force of his free will, by gaining proper understanding, He changes the course of his karma. Now, how is this understanding gained? There are so many ways. Understanding can be gained. Knowledge can be gained by good advice from those that know. It has to be convincing for the mind to be pleased. That is one way to approach it. The other way is surrender. Hmm? Where we would say, not my will, but thy will be done. Hmm? Now, free will is always ego-orientated. Hmm? We call it free, hmm? but that's a misnomer. The will is not free. The will, which we call free will, is just a reflection of our personal conditioned ego. So, instead of free will, it would be more appropriate to call it ego will. Hmm? It is not free, it is bound. For underlying that ego, there is still a divine will. Hmm? There is still a divine will. And in order to develop that kind of surrender where we can truly say, Thy will be done, it would mean that the so-called free will has to merge into the divine will. Otherwise, it is just thinking uselessly of no avail or value. Hmm? Good. Now, what is the procedure and how do we merge the so-called free will into the div divine will? Hmm? It comes about not by annihilation or destruction of the ego, for that is impossible. Hmm? The ego can never be destroyed or annihilated. But the ego can be clarified, made more cleaner, 
more transparent. So that by spiritual practices, when our egos becomes transparent, the light of the divine will shine through. So when the light of the divine will shines through, it overcomes the ego will, which we term as free will. And when that is overcome, there is a spontaneous surrender. No surrender is ever true or, or total by the free will itself. It is just a repatterning. We say, I surrender my will to thee, let thy will be done. That is a mental concept and it is bluffing our own minds. Because tomorrow we go and do according to what our ego will wants to do. Hmm? That is not the way. It is good for prayer. It is very good for prayer and it has its uses. Hmm? Where in that moment, hmm? in that utter emotional state, when all is lost, that's the only time people do it. Hmm? When all is lost, you say, Oh God, take my will, let your will only be done. Hmm? It's good as a prayer, it's good as an affirmation, it does help. Hmm? It could be a path, you're on the path towards surrender, but it is not surrender. Hmm? Surrender is a thing that has to be totally spontaneous otherwise it is a conditional surrender with so many strings attached hmm? when do people want to surrender their f- free wills to the di- divine will when do they want to do it only when they are in trouble hmm? when they've hit their head against the wall when they can't find any way out all the doors are locked Hmm? which incidentally they have caused it to be locked Hmm? then they say oh God I surrender you do now Hmm? and that's a very important point I wish more doors can be locked more doors can be locked because you reach that stage hmm, of utter desperation ah So what have you reached there by saying, thy will be done? You have reached desperation, not surrender. You see? But this desperation as the stepping stone hmm, can lead one to surrender. Hmm? Because in this desperation you feel helpless. You feel totally helpless. You don't know what to do, then you pass the buck. Yeah. Your will now. Hmm? But at this moment of desperation, when mind and body is lost, huh? then divine will enters. Hmm? So, what is the stumbling block there? The mind that produces what we call free free will. Hmm? And what is the mind? But your ego self. Hmm? I want to surrender my ego to God. Impossible. It's a mental concept. And divinity is not attained by the mind or mental concepts. Hmm? It is not attained that way. It is attained when you reach rock bottom. Hmm? An alcoholic, hmm? he is so much in his compulsive drinking, hmm? it becomes a disease to him. And it is said that only when he reaches rock bottom that he changes his life style, that the compulsion goes away from him. Hmm? And he stops drinking. So, 
to reach that stage of desperation, call it difficulties. Huh? To reach the stage of desperation is a great boon to mankind. For from there, from rock bottom, you can only turn upwards. Hmm? So man cannot reach surrender. He can reach desperation. Hmm? But that is the stepping stone where you allow, hmm? because the mind is gone, you allow the divine will to start doing its work. And divine will can only do its work when your mind is finished. When you are in a state of no mind. Hmm? Then there's a chance of that force, that spiritual force which we call divine will, for it to enter. Its path is not impeded, it is not blocked. Hmm? And then surrender automatically happens. You see. Surrender cannot be brought about. It automatically happens. You cannot order the grace of God, grace of divinity. It automatically happens. Only you have to be conducive to it. Now, the easier way is this. You don't want to reach a total state of desperation for that to happen. But in our conscious state, through spiritual practices, through meditation, when we go beyond the mind, we allow the divine force to enter through us. Hmm? And that brings about when the mind is pushed aside, when one transcends the mind, goes beyond the mind, then the divine will, will has its play. And that is called surrendering the ego. Remember, you can't surrender your ego. No. Divinity makes it surrender for you. By not forcing you, but by infusing itself in your very being. Hmm? That being, that higher being, infuses itself in the lower layers of being. Hmm? And that is what divine will is in relation to free will. Now, free will is the producer of all karma. Free will produces karma and karma produces free will. Hmm? It is a vicious circle. As I said just now, what came first, the egg or the hen? Hmm? That is the whole theory behind it. And not the mental theory. No, that, that is what is. It is an isness. Hmm? So, to be in that area where karma can be controlled, because karma, uh, karma, is but free will. Karma produces free will. The karmic reflection and workings of karma huh, is what we term as free will. Hmm? So we can either do it through desperation hmm, or we could do it through spiritual practices. As I've said many times before, open the window and the fresh air must come in. Hmm? Hmm? Open the mind and allow the fresh air to blow in, the, divi the divine will to blow in. That's all. Simple. Okay. Yeah, five to one is nearly lunchtime, I think. Good. Thank you. That's a lovely question.